Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. This is our second lecture in our four-part series, Introduction to Traditional Chinese Medicine, where we're covering some of the fundamental basics of Chinese medicine theory. Um, I'm doing this series because I really want to demystify some of the language around Chinese medicine. Um, because as I think I've said before, I feel like it really is the most elegant way to explain uh, human physiology and how we fit into the greater landscape of our natural world. So um, we're breaking it down, hopefully in simple chunks and in absorbable chunks. And of course, I'm open to any questions you have at the end of the lecture. We'll have a, a moment where you'll be able to ask your questions. So. Um, we are covering the basics, as I said, and uh, the last time we spoke, we covered the concepts of yin and yang and the five element correspondences and cycles. And today we're going to be speaking about the vital substances. So um, remember that while the words seem foreign, <laughs> the concept themselves, the concepts themselves are actually very close to what we know. Um, but there's a unique holism to the structure of how they work together, which is the major adjustment that we make when comparing what we know of Western medicine and TCM. So the vital substances in Chinese medicine are the things that make up our person. Previously, we discussed some of the theory behind how TCM looks at the interrelationships of the universe. Today, we're discussing that in terms of your body. And so even though it's not a vital substance, I've included a bit of review on the yin and the yang. We're also going to touch on the jing or the essence, which, um, as I'll explain later, is kind of a bit like the Chinese concept of genetics. The Shen spirit mind, uh, spirit mind isn't necessarily the most accurate translation, but it's I think the closest we're going to get to. But um, the Shen is an important part of Chinese medicine as a holistic system. And so we're going to talk a lot about the mind body connection. And I just want to introduce you briefly to that concept of what we call Shen in Chinese medicine. Um, we are going to briefly tackle the subject of qi. Um, I couldn't talk about substances without talking about qi, but it is perhaps the most enigmatic of all of the substances because we don't have a one-to-one -one biomedical equivalent of qi in Western medicine. Um, and as I'll say again, we don't even really have a word for it in English. So bear with me as I try to go through the basics of that with you just to hopefully shed a little more light on it so that when you're in the clinic and your acupuncturist is talking to you about, oh, your chi is this or your chi is that, you know, at least you have some reference point that you can kind of hearken back to when you're thinking. We're also going to talk about the blood and the body fluids, um, which shouldn't sound too foreign to you. Um, although, again, the way they interact with the body as a whole, when we look at the physiology uh, in Chinese medicine uh, might surprise you um, and might inspire you as it did me so many years ago. So, so we're going to start tonight with yin and yang. Um, and uh, as we talked about before, we already know the properties of yin and yang. That they are not pure, that they hold one within the other, that they interrelate and intertransform. And there's all these characteristics of yang. And these same theories hold true in your body as well. And so when we're looking at the yin of your body, it is your physical uh, body, the tissue, the moisture, the substance of your body. Um, whereas the yang in comparison to that is vitality, it's energy, the warmth, the movement of your body. Um, and so uh, we see these two things as part of a whole. Um, and we also look at them in comparison to one another when we're doing our diagnoses. So you have to remember that when you hear people talk about your yin or your yang, that we are making the distinction along those yin yang lines of, you know, dark and moist, light and, um, and dry, you know, those things exist, but of course, again, only in their relationship to each other, because they are in fact a part of that whole. 
And that hole is associated with the, the TCM kidney, the Chinese medical kidney, not the biomedical kidney, although I love looking at the symbol because if you kind of look closely, you see, you see a bit of kidney in there, don't you, right? Um, and the kidney in Chinese medicine is the root of the body. So we look at these primal aspects within the body. Um, if you're familiar with the chakra system, uh, you can think of it as the root chakra, right? So that is where we house that yin and the yang, and they are important pieces of what make us human. So um, the next subject we're going to tackle is the one of Jing, uh, translated into English as essence. Um, and uh, I like to uh, use our modern understanding of genetics to describe the concept of Jing, um, because I think um, I think it, it's kind of neat the way it works out. So in Chinese medicine, you have a couple of different kinds of essence. Primarily, they're broken down into pre-heaven essence or post-heaven essence. And the pre-heaven essence is what we receive from our parents. And the post-heaven essence is what we are able to make from, from our chi. And I like to look at this sort of a little bit like the pre-heaven essence are the chromosomes and the genetic material that uh, create you um, from your parents. And that the post have an essence is kind of like the epigenetic aspect of that material. So if you're not familiar with epigenetics, it's it's not a new concept, but it's not widely spoken of necessarily in medicine yet. But it is how the genetic material in your body is switched on or off, right? The understanding of that, which is that like how those genetic markers are switched affects our metabolic processes and most importantly, what we call the expression of those genes. So those genes are kind of the primary encoding of our bodies and then how they get switched on and off depending on, on our environment and our, our nourishment. That it, affects, um, it affects how those genes sort of express ourselves, the uniqueness of ourselves. And so when I'm looking at this in terms of essence, I think, okay, so if it's affecting our metabolic processes, it's also affecting our ability to regenerate the kidney essence and ultimately more chi. And, and that really we're looking at that sort of age old question of nature versus nurture. Um, and it's not a perfect metaphor, but, um, but I love the idea that, that while epigenetics is quite new to modern science, uh, Chinese medicine was already conceptualizing it and creating a place for it within the theory of its physiology, that we have a concept that we can use to hold these ideas of, of uh, the pieces that we inherit and then the pieces of that inheritance that are affected by how we are able to process, make, nourish um, ourselves because of our environment um, or what we're eating. And, and consuming so and it's important to note that that you're never going to get more pre heaven essence what you are given at birth is what what you you get um and so so that's a very precious substance to to be careful of and that it's that post heaven essence that what we make from our chi and the kidney essence that we can replenish right that determines a lot of our growth and reproduction and development but but that because you only get so much of that pre-heaven essence, we see this as a very special substance. Um, it is precious and to be guarded. So when we think about essence, um, each organ has its own chi. Kidney chi is, is heavily associated with essence. And so um, also kidney chi is to be protected, right? Because, because we, we make our kidney chi um, from essence along with the kidney yin and the yang. Um, so even though it can be replenished and it determines our growth and reproduction and development, um, we do need to protect that. Um, when I talk about growth and, and changes, um, the essence or rather the release of essence is an important piece of the hormonal maturation cycle. So it matures during the hormonal, cha hormonal changes of your life. In women, we can look at the, the onset of menses or the menarche and, and all the way through to the, uh, to the absence of, of menses through menopause. And so that release of essence over your lifetime, it follows cycles, eight year cycles for men, seven year cycles for women, but this is part of how it grows and changes. And so this is why throughout your life, 
you'll see how that affects your different needs from a, a biological perspective and a physiological perspective. Um, and it's mostly because of how your essence is being distributed. You distribute most of your essence during your childbearing years um, or during your reproductive years for men, your childbearing years for women. And so um, you, you use that essence to create new life. Again, it's that very precious, like, life-generating substance. And I'm not talking about the life that we live on day to day. I'm talking about the life that we put forward and push forward <laughs> uh, through reproduction uh, throughout the rest of, of time. So uh, it's precious, um, and, um, and it is associated with reproduction. So the other piece here that I think is important again, just because of the way it ties into biomedical physiology, is that it's, um, it, it is the producer of marrow. Um, and in Chinese medicine, when I say marrow, I'm not necessarily talking about bone marrow, although there's a piece of that. More accurately, when we talk about marrow, we're talking about the stuff that is inside your bones. So it is, in fact, bone marrow, where your body makes red blood cells, right, <laughs> which are also connected with thinking and, and it's the thinking blood connection, right, that we'll get to in a minute. You'll see the blood is very heavily connected with, with the mind. But, um, but it's also your central nervous system, the spine that is within the bones, right, the spinal cord that's within the bones of the spine, the brain that is within the cranium. And so it is also heavily associated with your synaptic impulses. Um, so keep that in mind that there's a nervous system component when we're talking about Jing, or if you're ever listening to talks about Jing, that, that there is a, a direct correlation there uh, between biomedicine and Chinese medicine. So the next piece of these substances is the Shen, or the mind. Um, it is sometimes talked about as the spirit, although... I feel like spirit is more a word that is talking about the soul, which is sort of a complex of various of the six shens that are associated with the organs. And the six shen is for another time, but um, it's good to remember that here what we're talking about is that mind-body connection. And the shen is a piece of that, um, both spiritually and the more complicated um, uh, description, but also just in a consciousness aspect. So it is the thing... Um, that makes you uniquely you. It is the thinking, feeling, memory, wisdom, consciousness of the you, um, that sort of personality aspect. Um, and it's all of those things and sleep, which we're now beginning to widely accept as a fundamental piece of healthy lifestyle. But sleep is, as we all know, what allows our brains to process and organize each day and it also ties the mind body together. So I want you to keep that in mind as we move forward. We will talk a little bit about the Shen. It is sort of that inner expression of what makes you, you. Um, and in Chinese medicine, when we're using it diagnostically, we'll often talk about how it expresses itself through your visage. We'll look at your face, your eyes, your countenance. And these are important pieces of diagnosis in Chinese medicine. And because of the way the Shen connects with the mind, um, and the spirit, it, it helps inform our diagnostic process. So, um, but again, this is part of that holistic system. We are going to delve into Qi. Oh, oh my gosh. Where to begin? So, <laughs> wiser scholars than I have tried to translate this concept over and over again, and none of them have found a suitable equivalent word in English. And even in Chinese, the word means many different things. So is like it's it's the age old question. We don't have an equivalent in English. I read a book recently that was talking about how this is actually kind of a fundamental deficiency within our society that, that we can't even quantify this concept within our language. But we're going to do the best we can. So etymologically, the character of chi attempts to capture the apparent duality of the word and that one piece of the character is representing the concept of vapor, and the other is representing um, the, the, the character, it's the character for rice. And so you have immediately this impression of, of something which is both substantial and insubstantial, right? That there is something 
that is both physical and spiritual, something that you can touch and something that is somehow just untouchable. And so um, I think that we have to remember that even though we think the spirit is somehow separate from the physical, that in fact, we understand that they are linked and that the secret of life is in that connection and their ability to function as one on this earth. And so this is when we talk about chi, right? The chi is that linking thing for us. Like there's all of these little correspondences between mind, body, mind, body, but the crux of it is here in the chi because the chi is what gives everything function. You can connect a spirit with a body, but can you make it move? And it's within the chi that does that. Can you make it do what it needs to do? So um, as I said before, every different organ has its own kind of chi and um and even not associated with the organs there are many many different kinds of chi you know um and we're not going to talk we're probably going to talk about two or three of them specifically today but mostly what i want to talk about is is the function of chi because it is its function um, and its ability to move us through stages of transformation that give it its meaning um so it is promoting growth and development it is the chi that allows your cells to grow and reproduce and it also the chi that allows um, things to circulate throughout your body right um, it has a warming function right it is that yang aspect of warming what is it that keeps your body temperature warm like why are we warm right we're warm because we're alive because there are tiny little things happening on our body every moment that are releasing little bits of energy. And it's the chi in Chinese medicine that maintains our body temperature. Um, it is defensive. So we have this concept of what we call wei chi, which is the kind of chi that sort of hovers on the surface of our body. And it's responsible for the opening and closing of our pores and, and the regulation um, of what we allow in versus what we expel out. And, um, and if there's a deficiency of this Wei Qi, this is how we get sick. We allow sickness to enter the body, sometimes through the skin. So this is why the concept of the common cold comes about, right? You go outside in a cold, windy day, you come back in with a chill and a sniffle, and then two days later you're sick, right? And we all know that it's viruses that cause the common cold. But what we don't always think about is that, you know, a virus does not exist in a vacuum. It exists within a person and an ecosystem. And so if your Wei Qi is not strong, then you are unable to protect or defend yourself against that virus. Um, it also has regulating functions, um, uh, checking functions. It controls movement and the function of things. It controls the blood within the veins. Um, it checks your sweat. So if, if you're sweating too much or you're bruising really easily, that's a... a, a dysfunction of chi. The chi is not doing its job properly. Um, and in fact, in general, if things aren't where they're meant to be in the body, we will oftentimes associate that with chi. Um, it is also transforming. So it, it, it helps us do the, the transformation processes of what it means to be a living, breathing, digesting human being. You know, we take in air, we transform it into chi. We take in food, we transform it into chi. Um, we transform that chi uh, into essence, we transform the essence into blood. You know, there's all kinds of transformational processes that happen in the body. Um, and I kind of like to think of it a little bit um, as there's a substance in your body in biomedicine called ATP, and I can't for the life of me remember the actual chemical name of this substance. ATP is an acronym, of course, but what they really are are those little packets of energy that every metabolic process in your body requires to do its work. And so um, I think of it a little bit on a cellular level as that little bit of ATP that requires us, that or that our body requires in order to, to you know, turn one substance into another to break it down into whatever nutrient parts and to rebuild it back up again. Um, and in that way, it is, of course, also very nourishing because it feeds all of these actions of the body, the metabolic processes and the neurological synapses. So um, that's chi. <laughs> Good luck to us all. But um, hopefully that brings a little bit more clarity to what we're talking about when we talk about your chi. So when you hear chi, I want you to think of function. 
I want you to think of transformation, and I want you to think of growth and warmth and movement in the future. And of course, there's all kinds of G, but basics. Um, the next substance is, of course, blood. And blood is, what else, but a dense and material form of chi. You can think of them, again, as like the yin and the yang, right? If the chi is the yang, the warming aspect, that energetic aspect, then blood is the yin substance aspect of chi. And uh, it requires the, the nutritive chi to circulate it in the blood vessels, uh, and it nourishes and moistens. I think that blood is not only just lymphatic fluid, uh, which could also be a product of body fluids, as you will see in the next slide, but you know, it is the thing that helps transfer nutrients from one thing to the other. And, um, and it's, so it nourishes and it moistens, it brings with it moisture, and it also is connected with the essence, right? So kidney essence and chi, are what make the blood. And so deficiency of either blood or essence is clearly linked pathophysiology, pathophysiologically in, in Chinese medicine to, um, to the other. Um, and also, it's not just the literal blood or fluid that runs in your veins, but there's also a spiritual component to it because again, it's, it's that physical yin aspect of qi. So it is both existing in that duality of physical and spiritual. And, um, and we see this a lot where, you know, a deficiency of blood can manifest uh, in a restless, anxious person, right? So um, those are all things that we talk about when we talk about blood. And, um, you know, the wonderful thing is, as much like chi is sort of that very basic thing, like you eat food, you make chi, like blood is very similar. Like you, you, can, you can do things to build blood. You just have to do things that are more substance related. We'll find in Chinese medicine that acupuncture tends to be very good for chi and herbs tend to be very good for blood and well either of the two will work on the other because they do have that duality and that that link that you know they each kind of house their own yin yang aspect and um the last thing that we're going to talk about tonight um it's probably the most basic um but I think it's a great place to set us up for next week when we begin talking about the evils, because I think that these concepts that we have when we talk about the blood, body fluids, um, things that are clear and light and turbid and heavy, and are we doing the right kinds of, um, you know, are we putting them in the right places? Are, are we metabolizing them appropriately? Those can start of get us closer into the evils as we talk about them. But um, at its basic, of course, like the the body fluids are are just what they what they sound like, right? They are the other fluids in the body, so they do have a spiritual component in that they are nourishing and affecting the orifices, which we look at as the sensory organs of the body, and they do moisten the joints and strengthen the brain and the marrow, which again is that nervous system. So we have the mind body connection. But what they don't necessarily have is that spiritual connection that you see in the chi, in the blood, and the essence, and the shen. So in Chinese medicine, we call the substances, the, the body fluid substances, the jin ye. And they are made from the food uh, that we eat and the liquids that we drink. And the jin part of it are the clear and light body fluids. They are warmer, they nourish the muscles, they moisten the skin, um, and then the other side of that, the more yin side of it, of course, are the ye, which are turbid and heavy. And those uh, moisten the joints, and they strengthen the brain and the marrow, right? So it's also the ye that nourish the, the sensory organs, the orifices. Um, so we have those two categories of body fluids, um, and in that we sort of then encompass all those other aspects of it. But if you think about, you know, you need your nose must be moist to, to smell your, your, you know, the gin is the sweat and the tears, the saliva and the mucus, right? Like you have to have saliva to digest your food. Um, and it is, you know, through a moist mouth that we are able to taste, right? Um, and the mucus in our nose keeps it clean and moist so that we can receive sensory information, right? So that we can, we can, can we, we can receive the world around us. Um, and in Chinese medicine, those organs make up what we call the orifices. So 
even though they seem kind of boring and mundane. You know, when we talk about the orifices in Chinese medicine, we're talking about, you know, your your consciousness. Like, are you awake and receiving and responding to sensory information? Herbal substances in Chinese medicine that open the orifices are, are important to keeping our our sensory awareness of the world around us. And it gets more complicated when we begin to look at that within the context of some kinds of modern illness, um, where we have things like sensory processing difficulties, where there is so much sensory information that's not being processed appropriately in the brain. And how can we use Chinese medicine and herbalism to affect change in that way? So um, on the one hand, we think, okay, body fluids, yeah, but it's important to know that they're there, you know? And the yeah, of course, are the urine uh, or the moisture that's found in the bowel, which again, kind of boring, kind of graphic, and yet really important to a properly performing metabolism. You know, we will always talk to you about your urination and your bowel movements in Chinese medicine. And, and it's not like we're trying to get too personal. It's just these processes are really important to how our bodies function, right? Are you moist where you need to be moist and dry where you need to be dry? And, and a lot of that has to do with whether your body fluids are being directed appropriately. So um, that is the last bit that we're going to talk about today for the, the substances. I hope you enjoyed my little breakdown here. And I hope that next time you're in your, your acupuncturist's office and they start talking about one of these substances, you have a little more knowledge to arm you um, in, in understanding what it is that's going on in your body. Um, again, they're just one of the many parts of how it all works together. And as we go through the rest of our, our pieces, we talk about the evils and, and we talk about the meridians. Um, it's, the picture is all going to become more clear, but it's important sometimes to start with these individual pieces so that you can have a better understanding as we move forward. So I'm going to open things up for questions now. And um, again, if you have a specific question that you don't want to ask publicly, feel free to send me an email or reach out. I really do love talking about Chinese medicine. Um, and so uh, don't be shy. Uh, happy to talk about any of those things. I could wax poetic about it for hours on end, uh, as you will come to find out, I'm sure. Um, anyway, thanks for joining us and I hope you join us again in a couple of weeks for our next video on the series where we talk about the evils, um, which are the Chinese medicine way of talking about what it is that makes us sick. So um, that promises to be an exciting ride. And um, until then, I will talk to you later. And uh, anybody who's hanging around for questions, uh, stick around and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your evening and I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks.